My name is Nathan Amaral, and I am an inter- a professional. I am a professional. <laughs> I'm an, an international real estate investor. I've been investing in real estate for oh, well, like I've been in the industry for 15 years. I've been investing for like 13 years, and I invest from remotely. I invest from anywhere. Um, I currently I am in Azores, Portugal. By the way, if you guys have been following along, you should know that by now. I am in Portugal. I invest here. I invest in the United States from here, and I also live and invest in Uganda, Africa. Primarily, I live mostly in Uganda, but I also uh, I also live here primarily. Guys, if you've been following along, you know I've been working on a project, commercial real estate project. We just acquired uh, 26 apartment units and a commercial mixed use uh, space. This facility is going to be. Um, for uh, assisted living. I think I just said that. This whole facility and all the apartments are gonna be for assisted living. Yeah, so what, what I'm gonna cover today, guys, I'm gonna show you some unique ways to be able to find real estate deals anywhere, no matter your location. I get this question asked me probably most of the time, is Nathan, how do you find deals if you're over there in Uganda or if you're over there in Portugal on the islands and stuff? How do you find deals from anywhere? Well, that is, uh, I'm gonna answer some of those questions today. Uh, and I also want to let you know that it's something that anybody can do. Uh, you don't need to be location specific. Like you don't need to be stuck in your own backyard. Now, don't get me wrong. Um, th- starting in your backyard might be a great place to get started when you get into into real estate. However, it doesn't. You don't have to be limited. You might be in a market that is not. There's nothing good happening, right? So, uh, you know, I know I know there's investors. I remember I was working with someone who lived in Kentucky. And they weren't in, uh, what is it? What, what's the main capital of Kentucky? I just forgot. They weren't in the capital. Sorry, I forgot the you know, capital of Kentucky and all that stuff. But they were not They were pretty much a little bit remote themselves. Their backyard did not have deals, okay? he So he was like looking for deals. So he had to invest remotely. And so you can do this even if it's in like five hours away remote, you know, virtually or in the next state, five states over or even out of country. So the good thing with this business and what we've been teaching here for quite some time is that you can literally do this business from anywhere. As long as you got a phone, a computer, and an internet connection, you don't even need a fax machine anymore, (laughs) that you can do this business too and you can make it happen for your life. So I wanna share that with you today. I wanna share with you a tool that you can use in your real estate business to help you find deals. Um, And so I I wanna show you that right now. The software is called Real Flow. Now, uh, by the way, Real is uh, spelled R E L E. <laughs> yeah, N- don't ask me for a spelling bee. Real with an E. So if you're actually to say it's Real E Flow, okay? But the way it's pronounced in the, to them is Real Flow, okay? So it's realeflow.com. And I want to show you this today because um, this is a great software for a single family. Uh, real estate investors. If you're doing single family real estate and you're investing uh, in your backyard or even, uh, you know, in a remotely in a different state or, you know, uh, in in a different position, right? Different location. This is great. Also, this is also great for rehabbers. Okay. This is why I say it's very specific if you're doing single family real estate, because a lot of the leads that you're going to get from this um, this software is based for single family. So here's the dashboard. When you first get an account, let me just kind of close this down. Okay. When you get an account, they kind of have an array of things going on here and different things that they, they're going to show you. Um, and I'm just going to give you like a, an, an overview. They do give you a one-on-one walkthrough, which I highly recommend, especially if it's your first time using this site. Um, they'll, I would, you know, get on this one-on-one walkthrough and they'll guide you through how to use the software. They'll do like a screen share demo with you and notice here how they also have the home depot. Again, the reason why I say that this is here is because, um, most of the time people using the software is for single family houses and for rehabbing. If you're rehabbing houses now, you can use, you can use real flow. If you're just flip, you know, flipping real estate, you can, if you're not going to rehab, you can definitely use real flow as well. It will help you manage your contacts, build your lists and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So let me, di- let me ju- dive into a little bit of the details here. Here's the create your contacts area, the contacts here. Now, if you're using another provider, you can actually import your contacts right in, into, uh, you know, into RealFlow. So if you're using a different source, Google contacts, wherever your contacts are living right now, you can easily import them and, uh, and do that. 
They also uh, give you color coordination, which is a nice feature because it, you can either tag them or you can add color coordination because let's say all your private money lenders, right? Or cash buyers are green, right? Let's say all your sellers are yellow, right? You definitely want to do that. You want to create these you know, groups as you build your contacts. You'll see that right here. As you add contacts, it will show... Oh, excuse me. I apologize. It will show you what type of contact is this? Is it a seller? Is it a buyer? What type of buyer is it? Is it a commercial? Is it a rehabber? Right? You would want to check those off. This is really important. I know it may sound kind of tedious in the beginning. You can do this in bulk, by the way. Okay. But if you're adding one at a time, it, it, you want to definitely select these, these things because this is how you're going to segment your list. This is really important. When you're segmenting your list, this way when you go into it, you can find exactly who you need. So if you're not working with a buyer or seller, you have another contact. Let's say you have an inspector. Great, tag inspector. Uh, and, or if you have another new type, you can do that. And then if they are connected to a specific property, like especially if you have a buyer, right? Connected to, uh, let's say you have a rehab buyer connected to a specific property, great. They're going to ask you what property is that? They're going to ask you um, how are they related, okay? So you're going to link the relationship there, okay? So that's if you're linking. This is really good because when you're building a buyer's list for one particular property, you can actually look at that property and see all the buyers that are interested in that property. Does that make sense? All right. So even though this is the groundwork and you're seeing the starting point, this is really important if you're adding one at a time. If you're transferring your data and you're doing a data import, it will ask you those same questions later on after you upload. It will ask you these same questions. Are they, and this is how you should upload it, by the way. If you have a whole list, it's all jumbled up. Everybody's, you know, mixed together in your contacts. Don't upload that all together. Sift and sort and segment your list so that when you upload it into RealFlow, that you can uh, specifically add them as a seller, add the, the type of buyer they are, or if they are something else. They could be a private money lender, appraiser, hard money lender, um, anything, mortgage broker, right? You want to make sure that you are segmenting this properly. Now, another little trick and secret I wanna show you here, see how it says private lender and I have it selected? What I want you to do is I want you to add something else, something like this, okay? See how it says 100K plus? This is a little different. You can actually put them under um, two, I believe you can still do two from what I remember, private lender and 100K. You see how I selected both of those, private lender and 100K? All I'm doing is segmenting this private money lender. That means I know they have 100K plus, okay? If they have 500K, okay, plus, then I'm gonna add that also to that contact, okay? If, it, so you can, you can do scaling to how you wanna tag these people, right? And this is really important that you set these up because when you're building a private money or hard money list, you want to only, you want to know how much money they have for closing. Okay, or if you're raising money, whatever it is, you want to tag them how much capital they have. And this is really important. By now, you should already have some scripts um, that you use to talk to uh, cash buyers or hard money lenders or private money lenders. You've got to have a script that you go off of. Okay, so that's contacts. All right, very, very simple, not too complicated, right? All right, next is lead flow. Lead flow, we're going to start it off with websites here. They give you a website. On this plan, again, I'm just showing you a, like a demo version. You can get up to three websites. I'll show you that in just a second. But first, let me go through this. You can start off with getting a website and you get to choose what kind of website you want, right? So you can have um, the type of website, you pick the type, you design it, you target, you pick the target audience, all that good stuff. So here, it, well, first you're gonna pick your squeeze page. A squeeze page is basically when you drive traffic and people are coming to your website, and they see your page, they want to know, well, what is this about? And this gives them the insight of what's this about. You're probably very familiar with this and it, you probably already filled these out. If you've gotten information online, this is what it's about. So there's all different kinds of versions here, as you guys can see. Okay. And what you would do is you select one of these, pick an audience type, meaning is this website for a buyer or is it for a seller? So let's put for a seller for now. 
and then let's pick a topic. So now what topic are we, who are we going for? This is really important, guys. This is really important. I hope you can see this clearly. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Uh, let's try that. Okay. Who is this for? That's really important. You have to know your audience because if you don't know your audience, then you're kind of going to be scrambling. You have to know who are you helping and your website should dictate and tell those people, their visitors, wh who is this website for? Is it for stopping foreclosure? Is it for selling their house fast for any particular reason? Is it for home improvement, selling without an agent, commercial, whatever it is. So let's talk to the people who are don't want to sell with an agent, okay? Maybe it's someone who just has an expired listing. There you go. This is the page that would go free. Here's an automated step-by-step -step system for selling your house fast and for top dollar when an agent can't do the job. If we don't buy your house, this book will show you how to sell it for exactly what you want and how to avoid paying annoying commissions. So basically what they're doing is they're providing you a private writing your seller who doesn't want to work with an agent. Their expired listing just happened, which I have one of those happening here on one of my properties in a little bit. Maybe I didn't feel they didn't do a good job. The listing's about to expire. Now what? Right? This book educates your seller. And, so, and basically what it does, it brings them a lead to say, hey, we'll buy your property for you. Right? That's that's what it is. Let's try something else. Let's do the sell fast and then let's pick. There's, see how there's a bunch of them? A bunch of what? Problems, right? There's a bunch of issues sometimes with these problems. People need to sell fast. Number one, let's see it. You need to sell your property now. It doesn't matter the reason. We can make a cash offer for your house and close quickly. Contact us today, right? Let's go to landlord sellers. Attention landlords, do you have a property you need to sell? We are ready to take your property off your hands today. Get a fast and fair offer. Boom. You see that? And you can change this. What's really important, inherited or probate, what's really important, guys, is that you know the audience and the problem that you're going to solve before you just send random people. See why this is so broken down specifically? Specific websites, specific people. Because you don't want a mixed message. You don't want to just send all kinds of people to your website and have them wandering around wondering what they're going to do. Very specific and planned marketing will get you great results. Let's go to property leads, okay? So now we're in property leads. First, we want to pick where. Where are we going to pick uh, a place, right? So if you had a particular place that you're looking for, uh, let me go. Oh, is it Winston-Salem? Hopefully I have that right. So Winston-Salem, that's in North Carolina. And I want to look for, let's see. Now, by the way, let me read these off to you just so you're aware. I can pick all lead types, absentee owners, cash buyers, free and clear, high equity, low equity, upside down. I can also get active listings, board investor, foreclosures, long-term owner, potentially inherited, pre-foreclosures, vacancy, zombie property, right? If I have a premium account, guys, it's just a demo account that I'm showing you. But if you have a premium account, you can get access to all those. Let's go to high equity, right? And then let's do they owned by an individual. You can also pick government and trusts. And let's narrow this down. As you can see, they have apartments and multis and townhomes. That's recent. And, and the land is recent too. That's cool. Um, and then single family. So let's do that. Oh, I'm hurting my neck here. All right. So now it brings us to the search board here, right? So now we have the map. We have Winston-Salem. And then over here, we have all the uh, other things, all the other things, other listings, right? So in the listings, you can see what their LTV is. By the way, there is also, you can break this down into how many bedrooms you want, right? Three bedrooms, two baths, square footage, nothing less than 1,200 in my recommendation, nothing higher than 3,000 if we're looking for like the bread and butter houses, as I like to call them. Uh, year built, probably nothing uh, older than 1950, Okay. Uh, now, this AI scores lead pipes. This is if you have the premium account there. So we'll get to that maybe in the future. Uh, last sale price. If you want to narrow it down to the last sale price, you can do that. If you're looking for a particular type of property and you want in a certain type of criteria, then you'd want to select that, okay? You can also select these through by LTV amounts, property values, auction dates, last notices for foreclosures, right? And then also owner occupied, in state absent. So I'm going to do out of state and in state absentee owners, right? So there might be a rental property. All right. So now look what it does it narrows down the properties, right? So here I have 
Properties that are narrowed down, I have LTVs of 42%. I have an AVM, which I'm going to tell you what that is in just a second. It's not ARV, okay? It's AVM. I'll show you what that is here uniquely to them. So I'm going to open this property up. So now here's the description. There's a map view, okay? I could definitely do uh, a street view if I wanted to. I could move the little guy on the street and it does from Google Maps. I don't have to have Google Maps open. It just kind of does it for me, right? I can look around and see what's going on, right? I can see what's happening here, okay? And that will open that, so I'll do that. For, now, it also does the summary. Single bed, four beds. Um, <laughs> single bed, four beds. Single family, four beds. There's the square footage. High equity, absentee owner. That is the lot, lot square footage. Two bedrooms, individually owned. Who owns it? David Grubbs owns it, and that's the mailing address for David Grubbs. You got it? So that's, there's the lead right there, right? More information about the property. How many stories is it? When was it built? Uh, the property taxes, the assessed uh, year. So those, uh, that assessment is pretty, um, you know, uh, pr pretty recent. Uh, shows the school district and also the legal description. If you need the legal description, that's already in there too. Now, a AVM, okay? It's this automated valuation model, okay? This is a little different. You might be familiar with ARV. That's a, that's after repair value. So it depends on what you're doing with the property. But let me describe, let me read this off to you and what AVM is in this real flow software. Automated valuation model is a type of service that provides real estate property valuations based on modeling several factors, including analyzing values of comparable properties. There are hundreds of AVM services used by financial institutions. The one we use is geared towards real estate services. It is important to know that AVM services does not include the condition of the property, okay? Condition of the property is ARV. That's that model, after repairs valuation, right? So there is a difference here, and they're trying to give you like a, an estimate of what this value would be uh, if it was good, ready to go, market ready. So we have a market value right now of 122. You see the difference here? Like, wow, why is this so... Why is there such a gap here, right? So we have the current market value of 122,900. We have a tax assessed value at 122 because we saw up here that the assessed value just happened last year. So they're pretty on point with their assessed values. Sometimes you can have an assessed value that's a lot lower. Uh, that's okay, especially if the market is higher. That's okay. But here you have a market value of 122,9. Now we have a loan uh, LTV of 43% because total loan right now is 70,000. But let's look at when was this loan done, okay? This loan was created in April 11th of 2001. So this there could still be a mortgage on here, maybe, maybe not, probably. Um, and it, this is the, the name of the bank, but it's letting you know that there is an open loan on it right now and it was taken out at that time. So it's it's still there. Um, this information is pretty current, so it's uh, you, you're getting pretty pretty decent solid information. Construction and materials, right here, you have you have the whole thing of like what is it made out of? Exterior, asphalt. Some things they're not going to give you, like especially interior walls. Good luck. But you'll get like heating if it's forced air, uh, the AC. You'll get all pretty much at least a number. I would say this is probably the stuff that you won't get the most information on uh, most of the time, but you at least you get some a, a, a good idea. Uh, and you'll also see some transaction history. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of transaction transaction history with this property at all. All right. So here we have the high abs absentee owner. So this has probably been a rental for a number of time. This might be a whole rental area, especially what would they say? It was like a college town or something like that, a uh, college area. Um, so this property could be a rental. I don't know what this is. This looks like in a whole apartment complex. It is. Yeah, it is an apartment complex because you can see all these cars. It might be an apartment complex right here. So this also might be rentals. Now, if we wanted to pursue this property, right? What we do is we hit add to my leads. Okay. So it just added it. Do you see that? It just added to the leads. So now what I do is I go over here and I go to my lead flow. Where did it go? Where are you? Where are you? Make sure I got this right in my properties. There, oh, there was the button. Oh, I just moved my screen. So you see how it says, uh-oh, where, where did I just, oh man, oh man. Don't you hate when that happens? 
Okay, let me uh, let me go here. I can go. I can do it a few ways. So you'll see that I oh, I did start a campaign. So I'm going to start a campaign. I'm going to go back to mailers. I can either do it one a few ways. I'm going to come back to that property in just a minute. I just want to show you where uh, uh, where it will populate. So. Uh, if I want to find new leads, import from my contacts, or up to update my own leads, I can do that also. You would select and then upload your files there. You can find new property leads. That was just what we were doing just a bit ago. We were finding uh, the properties, okay, that way. And then, um, okay, so there's the lead pipes, property leads. Yeah, I want to go back to that screen where I just had that property. <laughs> where did I just put them? And I know it comes out when you do a mailer campaign. So that's the other the other part I'm going to show you here in just a second. Oh, man, I think I'm just going to have to create a new one. So also in the lead section, you can you can import leads directly if you wanted to, right? So you could if you had properties that you're already working on in a different CRM, you could import it through here or you could create a new one. Okay. But anyway, let me just jump to it then because this is where this is where it kind of all comes together. Okay. So when you have um, a campaign, when you're doing a campaign, you're gonna select the property that you, the properties that you picked in your leads, okay? That's what you would do. You would select those properties that you are working on. So let me, I think it's best if I show you, um, it's best if I show you, where'd it go? No, 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 not that one. Da, 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 da. Yeah, okay. It's best if I show you like that step. Let me go back to that screen. Oops. Okay, let me just go back to the screen because there was a button I wanted to show you that you'll see the leads are right here. See this button right here where it says my leads? So I'm gonna click on that. And this will show those two properties. This was the one. This was the one that we just picked, right? So when you're in this screen, you can actually go click direct mail, and it will take you to the next screen, which is uh, which was where I was just five, like three minutes ago. You can also help you remove duplicates. So we click that, okay? And now it's going to take us to the campaign, okay? This is where you would name your campaign, all right? So I'm gonna. It's the absentee campaign or landlord, right? So in this case, you just want to give it a name, uh, Winston. Okay, I'm going to do that. Winston campaign as an example. And how many pieces do you want the homeowner to receive? This is really important. You have to have more than one touch. You have to have more than one piece of mail go out. So I'm going to put five. Um, and you can you can choose whatever you want, but I would suggest the more mail that you do, the more results you're going to get. All right, next, who's the target audience for? Remember, we were talking about landlords, so we want to do absentee owners. Okay, now it's going to tell you what card or what mail do you want to do, what kind of postcard do you want to do, postcard, postcard, postcard. Now, listen, guys, this is mainly postcards. If you're looking to do letters, then you're going to have to use in another service, but post postcards tend to be the cheapest, and they work decently well for houses, Okay. So uh, let's pick uh, the mailer number one. Let's just do this for now. I'm gonna select, you know, you know, I'm gonna select the first one on all of them. But you can pick different sizes for each mailer, and you can pick different verbiage and look and feel on each one. So for now, I'm just gonna pick rental property. I can preview this if I want to and see what it looks like, okay? It's gonna have all my information right there. See where it says sender website? I don't know if you guys can see that, sorry. See where it says sender website? That would be the website we're sending them to. Remember that website that we set up <laughs> set up earlier? That's where it would go to, okay? Um, we are ready to buy your rental property as is. Are you sick and tired of dealing with tenants or over uh, overall disappointment investment? Blah, blah, blah. Visit our website, get a no obligation offer for your property. Tired of dealing with tenants, right? You understand, it gives you the postcard already generated. All right, the next one. Remember I said I wanted five of them. I'm gonna pick another one. Next one, the third mailer, I'm going to pick the, that one. I want to change it up a little bit, okay? Each one, you want to make it a little bit different because that's how marketing is. Marketing is all about testing the pieces, okay? You can also upload your own. If you have your own that you created on your own from a different website, you can do that too. Um, and I'll leave that selected and go to the next one, all right?
So you get the idea, right? You don't have to do, you can actually preview these and you can see all your information will be populated in here as well. Okay, you can preview the front and backs of all the mailers. So you get the idea, right? Finish and review order. Oh, what are you saying? Please make sure you upload. Oh gosh, you're gonna get me on the upload? All right, sorry guys, one second. Uh, you know, when you're doing demonstrations, you can never, you don't know what to expect, right? All right, next. Okay, so we preview everything. We finish and review the order. Oh, uh, yeah. So you get the point. <laughs> Guys, I can't walk you through every step of this because it's asking for the headline, right? And the tagline. So the headline is actually going to go right in there. Sell your house now, right? You get the idea. And they give you some templates that you can use for designs right here. Okay? And that will get plugged in right in here in the headline. All right, you can put in a custom message and you would fill these in and go through them and guess what happens next? You review the order, you pay for it and the mail goes out. It actually also over here, because we're only sending two, okay? We have two recipients and we have five campaign touches. Total pieces is 10 pieces, first class postage, okay? It's giving us a total of 350. So it's telling you exactly how much it's going to cost to mail five pieces of mail, postcards, to two recipients, total of 10 pieces. It gives you that entire thing. Okay? So that's how it breaks down. You see how that all comes together to helping you find uh, deals? Right? Property leads, people leads. I don't think it's going to get that far down. Um, you can actually go into uh, probate leads and how to use it, how to find it and sift and sort. Okay? You can pick the state. You can every state that they have on here you can also pick the counties right very specific if you want to do probate they also have an area of people leads okay this is if you want to find specific people such as private lenders maybe you want to find private lenders in an area maybe you want to find renters or bankruptcies okay you can do that also so let's go back to winston salem okay and then we hit search okay and there it is. There's our private lender. So you can actually do a mail piece to all these private lenders. How many? I can't see how many are here. Hold on. Let me. Uh... Okay, there we go. So we have 354 private lenders. When you select them, okay, you can actually add these to your leads. Okay, you just click my leads and then you can add them to your leads. What you can do then is you can direct mail private money lenders. Okay, you can direct mail them. Okay, you can also check into them and uh, hold on, let me do this. Okay, you can actually click into the lead. Where is it? Okay, you can click into it and then you can save it. That's what you want to do. You click save, and then now they're saved as a private lender. Remember, I said earlier you want to tag them. This is that part right here type property. A private lender. This is really important tagging because you're gonna have private lenders, you're gonna have cash buyers. So this kind of helps you do that for you. Um, but this is this is really important. And then you can you can mail the entire list if you want to. Okay, you can mail the list. You can you know, even change it up. You can even add more tags if you wanted to. You can link the private lender to a specific property if you wanted to. Okay, so that's really important. It's let me let me let me share something with you guys that's really important about this process of contacts. When you are building your database, it's really important even though it's a little time consuming in the beginning, it's important that you put these tags on them because later on you don't want to fumble and look for them. You want to be very specific now, tag them appropriately so later on when you need them, you can find them instantly with just a search. And very easily, by the way, if I had all those numbers punched in here, let's say Remember how I showed you 100K and all that? If I did that and I did a search, it would it, when those contacts are there with that tag, it will pull up everybody who has 100K. Another way to do that also is through um, anyone who's like uh, blank records or direct records, anyone who's colored. If I want to just search by color, uh, private hard money lenders, private money lenders, sellers, buyers, that stuff. I can do that. Okay, so that's the other thing. Also. RealFlow has a knowledge base, but they also have some uh, courses here that they that they can uh, you know show you how to do, such as like wholesaling or working with foreclosures, um, how to do Facebook marketing, some entrepreneurial skills, 
as well as uh, private money lending. So they have some courses in here that will take you through that knowledge base that's really helpful and supportive. And uh, as you can see here, really helpful software. So the idea guys with this is that you're gonna use this platform to help you do the marketing and generate leads uh, into your business. And there is a bit more when it comes to like lead pipes and whatnot. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna break down the pricing and then we're gonna call it a day. Okay, so grow your business faster with scored leads. And basically what this is, this is a video here that you can check out. But basically um, with an additional, it's an additional thing, okay? It's an additional fee and it, it gives you more uh, data on the properties. How It's more data driven for the platform, okay? Such as, you know, retail score, rental score, wholesale score. They're scoring properties, like what are the chances? It's really more power and data. If you guys are familiar with PropStream, um, you might be familiar, you might, if you're familiar with that, this is kind of like going in that area, giving you more data on the marketing in the leads, okay? That's really, really important. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you was the pricing of RealFlow. Okay, so I always like to show you the pricing. One of the ones we were just going through was the one website, so it was the light version, okay? I was giving you that, uh, the demo version of that. However, if you have the uh, pro version, if you do it monthly, it's gonna be 125. If you do it annually, it comes down to 104 a month, which is not too far away from 75 a month. You're just paying for it annually, okay? And this gives you a little bit more. It gives you five lead gen websites, which I really do recommend because it's really powerful. So all those squeeze pages, you can get up to five. In this one, you only get one, okay? So you get up to five of those lead pages. So if you wanna target different types of people, that's really important. It also has 10 users, which is really good because if you're bringing on an assistant, if you have a virtual assistant in your business, okay? Or you have multiple people in your team, it's really important as well, all right? So some of the comparisons down here, uh, these are pretty much the same. The leads lead flow is gonna be the same, okay? Uh, pricing for direct mail is gonna be the same. Then opt-in forms, where it changes up a little bit is going to be right here, basically in the users and where is the websites? Right here and the amount of websites that you have, okay? With, with the team version, okay, if you pay for it annually, it's gonna be 145 a month and you get uh, the same thing, but you get unlimited users, but you also get unlimited lead gen websites, which is really powerful. That's gonna be the most powerful. Here's the thing. At the end of the day, guys, I don't know, sorry, I didn't know my screen was so zoomed out. At the end of the day, guys, what you want to do is try that, try which one. Um, if you want to start a little bit lower just to test it out, and then you can always upgrade later. Uh, but you get, try it risk-free for 30 days. You get a money-back guarantee, but try it out. And if you're not using the software right now in your business, this could be really helpful for you. Um, again, mainly this is um, for uh, single-family uh, real estate and uh, especially if you're rehabbing houses, a uh, great tool for that also because they have additionally in the pro, they have the rehab planner, they have the rehab estimator, the deal analyzer, and they also have a comping tool, okay? They also have a comping tool, so it helps you get comps as well. I didn't, I didn't have that one because I was just showing you this version right here, the demo one, but they have those things as well. Um, the CRM is built in, fax, uh, document storage, power linking, calendar, task, which is really great when you're building a team. Um, and email marketing already in here as well. So there's a lot of things, um, even financing, that you can get with RealFlow. And uh, that's why I'm kind of telling you, you should probably start off with the pro version um, and because it's gonna give you the, uh, the, the, the best bang for your buck when you're, when you're building your real estate business. Then later on, as you build a bigger team, you can you can upgrade to the team version, okay? So that's RealFlow, guys. It's a great tool that you can use in your real estate investing business. It's uh, a very powerful tool. Um, I've used it on and off through over the years. Uh, I've always tested different softwares, so I like to try different ones to see how it works in my business. I have to say, out of all the other real estate investing platforms, I know there's like REI, BlackBook, there is um, FreedomSoft, and there's a whole bunch of other ones. 
but I've really always come back to real flow. I always think they're they're, they're really they're really well. And, and in addition to that, uh, and, uh, there's another one out there, a Podio, but it's not specifically for real estate. It's a project management software. It does have a lot more um, flexibility of doing things with with it uh, with the platform, but it's not very text. You have to be a little bit more. There's a little bit more of a learning curve for tech on the tech side. So uh, real flow kind of avoids all that, and it's more uh, more easy to use. Okay. So great, guys, if you have any questions about this um, you know, now during, uh, not now, but I'm sorry, after uh, the replay, just feel free to chat it up, throw some comments below. Hope this was helpful helpful to you. And by the way, if you have uh, any other questions, you can throw it in the chat. Just want to say, hope you're staying safe and happy and uh, during this time. And I hope that you are diving deeper into your business during this time because this is the best time. There's no better time to get started than right now.